guys, welcome back to the Baby Sleep Magic Podcast. My name is Chantelle and in today's episode I'm going to be talking about how to extend short naps. Now this is by far one of the most talked about, one of the most uh, queried things that I get, whether it's DMs, questions on Insta, anything. It's all to do with cat naps or short naps in particular. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview of how you may be able to extend those short naps. Um, Look, my motto is everything is fixable. So, you know, it's usually comes with a few tweaks that is make can make all the difference. So look, my first tip is as long as you've got a baby over the age of, you know, six to eight weeks old is make sure that bedroom or the room they're in is dark because babies are not very good at switching off. And if you are having trouble with your baby either falling asleep or having good naps, it's darkness is the absolute key to success here. So making sure that room is dark is definitely gonna work to your advantage. Whether you've got block outs or you use cardboard on the windows or you can use alfoil, there is definitely different ways to achieve that. Make sure there is no night lights turned on and ideally make sure the door is closed because babies under the age of two are not afraid of the dark. So make that room dark because it will help. It doesn't mean you have to have a dark room for their whole life. It doesn't. They just need to practice and practice makes perfect. Once they're good at falling asleep and staying asleep, having a dark room when they're, you know, one, two or three isn't going to be the deal breaker. You can live without it. But while we're trying to teach them and get the best results, to get the most success, having a dark room is absolute key. Um, You know, and also I'm just going to put out there, it is very normal for babies to catnap and have short naps up until the age of four to six months of age. So if you if you are in that category, your child is in that that age group, it's still very common and expected for catnaps to occur in that age. However, it's not impossible to try and extend naps. You know, you might not achieve it every single day, but you might be able to get the odd nap, extended nap here or there. So I just wanted to um, you know, put that out there when it comes to extending naps and your expectations around good naps for young babies. Um, So yeah, as long as your baby is over the age of four to six months, you can expect to get a little bit of consistency with longer naps. So the other tip that I've got in regards to extending naps is to make sure you're using white noise. Now, white noise drowns out external noises. If you've got a light sleeper and they fall asleep but they wake up after 35 or 45 minutes because they can hear things. They can either hear other siblings or you might have traffic or you might have dogs barking. You might have people over. You might not want to whisper 24 seven. Then white noise drowns that out. You know, babies come from a loud environment in the womb. They're used to 90 decibels 24 seven. If they're in a silent room, chances are they won't sleep very well. So if you are in the predicament where you're having your baby or toddler is having short naps, white noise, again, along with the dark room, may be, you know, the key and the piece of the puzzle that you need. Make sure that it's loud. You know, um, if you're a little unsure on how loud, get a free decibel checker on your on your phone and put it near the white noise that you've got. I usually recommend something that sounds like rain because it's natural and it's consistent and there's no pauses and breaks. Again, you can get the rain noise on either our app, the Baby Sleep Magic app, which we've got in there for free, or there's other plenty of options that you can get white noise from. My advice with white noise though, make sure you can, you've got a device that plugs in, otherwise you'll go through a million batteries. So make sure it's usually loud, as similar to running water in the shower. That's usually my benchmark when it comes to white noise. Um, make sure that you are following an age appropriate routine or wake windows. Don't have to necessarily follow times. I'm against following times because every day is going to be different, but your baby, depending on their age is going to, is only capable of staying awake for a certain amount of time. So let's just say, you know, uh, a six month old baby is capable of staying awake between two hours at the beginning of the day to more like two and a half hours as the day progresses and goes on. And that's really all they're capable of doing. So you need to ensure that you follow that wake window to be able to get a, a nap happening in the first place and then capture a good nap. Because unfortunately, if they get overtired, they will have str- they will struggle falling asleep and they will struggle staying asleep. So Again, the key to success here is timing is key. If you're not sure on your timings, I do have information on appropriate wake windows on my Instagram page. 
um, that's for free. Otherwise, if you want more of a detailed guide on timings and information, then obviously the Baby Sleep Magic app has all that relevant to your baby's age. Um, now, my biggest tip here, apart from all of this, is hunger. You need to rule out hunger to ensure that your baby, one, is capable of falling asleep fuss free, but two, and most importantly, that your baby can last longer than 45 or 50 minutes. Because if they're due for a feed in an hour, they are not going to sleep for two hours or even an hour and a half. It's just not going to happen. So whether your baby is purely breastfed or on the bottle or formula or has started solids and is eating food, you need to ensure that they've eaten enough before they go down for their nap. So as a quick snapshot, what I always suggest my families do, um, especially for babies over the age of you know three months, is offer them a top up of milk before they go down for their nap. And this is even for older babies as well. You know, even babies are on food, they might not be the best at eating. So offering them a little bit of milk is better than one, offering them none at all, or two, getting that they might be waking up through the night because they're genuinely hungry. And you know, the thing with babies and toddlers here, they control their own calories. So the more you can give them through the day, the less they're going to want to need overnight. So offer them some type of top up. And I say top up because it's just an option before they go down for their nap. And ideally it's done between 15 and 20 minutes before they go down because you don't want them falling asleep on the bottle or the breast before they go down for their nap. That's not what this is about. This is business. You feed them the bottle or the breast in the lounge room with the lights on, the TV on, the windows open, they're talking out loud, and it's an opportunity for them to have a little feed. It's not an opportunity for them to get those butterfly sucks and doze off and have a little mini five minute power nap. That's not what this is about or even doze off and you transfer them into the cot or bassinet. That's not what I'm suggesting. It's purely business. Give them the opportunity to have a bit of a feed. If they do, amazing. If they don't, no problem. It means they're either not hungry or didn't want it. But at least we know when they go down for their nap, one, they're full, but we also know if they wake up after the 40, 45 minutes, you can try to, depending on their age, resettle them back to sleep knowing that they are not starving and ravenously hungry. So that is my absolute biggest tip when it comes to uh, lengthening naps. Um, look, the last piece of the puzzle, to be honest, is your baby needs to be able to self-soothe. If you are holding your baby to sleep, feeding your baby to sleep, rocking your baby to sleep, then unfortunately the chances of them having a good long nap, especially when they're over the age of four to five months, is pretty rare. So if that's if you're in that predicament and that's your situation, my first tip is to work on self-soothing to begin with. Um, and even if you do 90% of the work and you pop them down and you assist them the last 10%, but it's done in their cot or bassinet. And that way, when if they fall asleep at that last little bit on their own, the opportunity for them to go back to sleep when they wake up at the 40, 45 minute mark becomes a lot higher if they did it before. Um, and of course, you can still assist them. You know, you can do some hands on settling, you can pat the mattress. There's loads of different options you can choose from. Um, but the biggest key to ensure that the the biggest key to success is to ensure that they can self-soothe so um, you know for babies who can self-soothe and can put themselves to sleep independently um, and especially for babies who are over the age of six and seven months the key to that this point now is to stall when they wake after 40 45 minutes if they've put themselves to sleep don't rush in that is my this is, this is the key, this bit here is the absolute key to success. So once you've got all the other pieces of the puzzles in, the dark room, the white noise, ruled out hunger, you've got your wake window fine, then make sure that, you know, like I said, this is only for babies over the age of six to seven months, that don't rush in and get them. Because if they're doing the work in the beginning, um, they can do the work at the 40, 45 minute mark. But to be able to get them to go back to sleep, it takes practice and their expectations around sleep also have to change. So, you know, if they've been used to you running in and grabbing them or patting them back off, then we have to change that because as they get older, that's not what you want to continue doing. You want them to be able to sleep for, you know, one and a half to two hours independently. And the only way you're going to get them to do that is by giving them the opportunity to do that. But to ensure they're capable of doing that, we need to ensure the room is dark, the white noise is on, you've ruled out hunger, you know, the timings are right and, you know, everything else that I've just said. So, you know, like I said, for babies over the age of six to seven months, 
don't rush in, give it at least 10 minutes, but only at 10 minutes when they've started to whinge and cry. You know, when they wake up, they might be happy in there for 10, 15 minutes, having a babble, having a play, having a whatever, and then their cries might, might start to ramp up. When their cries start to ramp up for older babies, time it. Get your phone, time it for 10 minutes if you can, you know, or a, a time that you're comfortable with. You might want to work your way up to 10 minutes. But if you can, have your benchmark at 10 minutes because you never know. You never know. If they've given the opportunity and they've put themselves to sleep to begin with, you know, the chances are if they're given the opportunity, the room's dark, white nose is on, tummy's full, you know, tick, 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 and they're given the opportunity, they will go back to sleep. Now, it won't happen on day one, day two, day three, but in the future, if you're consistent with that approach, it will happen. I promise you that is a promise. It will happen. It comes down to consistency and it comes down to all those other things that I said as well. So look, I hope that gives you a bit of an overview on short nap culprits, how to extend naps, expectations around naps and some tips around how to improve naps. Um, look, if you do find this information helpful, please feel free to share it with another mum or a friend. And also I'll just touch on reviews. I just want to thank all of you. If you're still listening, thank you so much for your kind words, your reviews. We're up to 20 plus five star reviews on the Baby Sleep Magic podcast. So for us, for me anyway, in particular, I'm absolutely wrapped with that. I'm over the moon. And um, yeah, you're and your support for Baby Sleep Magic Podcast is just fantastic and I can't thank you enough. So thanks again for listening and I'll see you in the next podcast.